currently a sophomore here at UNC. I'm majoring in computer science. Hi everyone, my name is Maria and I'm from Lima, Peru. I've lived there for almost all my life. Um, yeah, the last two years of high school, I went to Italy. I'm a freshman here and I'm majoring in economics. Yeah, sure. We have a focus activity for y'all. Uh, so discuss it with a uh, partner next to you. Uh, how do you celebrate New Year's Eve? Um, um, when you have uh, some comments, please write them down in the comment section, like the messages, so that we can read them and find later similarities between how you celebrate it and how we celebrate it in our home countries. Yeah. The last session we asked you to speak about your home state. Okay. Okay. Um, so now we'll move on to the objectives, which are the following. Yeah, so after this pres uh, presentation, it will be the best if you can understand uh, the following questions that I've, li uh, I've listed. So why traditions such as fire um, firecrackers, spring couplets, and red pockets are kept? And what is your zodiac sign? And what are some special foods that Chinese people eat on New Year's Eve? And regarding Peru, these are the main questions that I have focused my presentation on. So how does the typical Peruvian celebrate New Year's and why do they celebrate certain traditions that you might find interesting as they're very Peruvian, let's <laughs> say, like they don't really celebrate it elsewhere. So I'll give you the, um, the meanings behind them. Okay, so now we'll start with New Year's celebration in Peru. The images, the three images um, that are there are different cities where New Year's is being celebrated. So you can see that it's a pretty big celebration that includes a lot of lights and colors. Now, I'll show you a map. Sorry. About where is Peru? So it's a country in South America. It's the one right um, circled by the this red circle there. And as you can see, it's like near Bolivia, Brazil, Ecuador, and Chile. Now, Peru is a very diverse country. We have the coast um, being right next to the Pacific Ocean. Then we have the mountains uh, where the Andes are located. They're very, very tall mountains. Um, and then we have a part of the Amazon forest, um, which is the image right on the top right corner for me. Then, Cusco is the city that's shown in the first uh, picture on the first line. Um, that's a city that's located within the mountainous region. So there you can see how there's mountains in the background and it's very traditional, very different to our main uh, city, which is Lima, which is the capital city. The bottom pictures are both from Lima. Uh, one is right next to the coast, um, which is a Pacific Ocean. There you can see it, it's that sea there. And then this part of the city is very modern. And then you also have a more traditional, in part of the city which is the historical center and that's the one on the bottom of the of the right and that's where we have like the oldest um, cathedral and also congress for instance so we um comparing it to the u.s we don't really have a place where people go to a physical place where people go to celebrate new year so in this case in the u.s would be like times square um, where people gather and celebrate it there we don't really have a place like that where people gather so then i think that the most common thing to do is that um for people especially when it's um, with your family more than friends to stay at home and then turn on the tv and do the countdown as you're watching the tv so i here included a little clip of this countdown this video is from a mexican tv channel however it's practically the same thing in peru oh okay um yes yeah, so this was a video Yes, so that's what we would usually like see on the TV, this countdown and Sorry. we're going to try yeah. putting on headphones and you guys will have to switch and see if this helps with the sound. If not, make sure you have your sound all the way up on your computer. 
um, but we'll see if this helps. Let us know in the chat. Yeah, so I don't know if you um, managed to hear me when I was referring to like, we don't have a physical place where people go to to celebrate New Year's. In the case of the US, I was thinking about um, that, that place being Times Square. Uh, so instead we watch the TV, we turn it on. Usually families do it, not, not much like when you're with friends. And then you just spend the last seconds of the year watching the TV while like the TV presenters um, count, count down the last seconds. And this was a little clip uh, showing that. Then these would be like the essentials um, that you would find in every Peruvian home uh, on New Year's. So it is a celebration, therefore there's always um, a family dinner. Um, you would usually gather with more than just like your immediate family, like your parents and your siblings. So you would also be like with your grandparents, with your uncles, cousins, for instance. Then we also have like this party objects like a tie, um, hat, sunglasses, and they're all yellow. Um, yellow is the color that brings fortune to you. So everyone tries to get as many yellow objects as they can. Then we also have a lot of fireworks. And people buy them and then they also, they, they like, uh, are able to like just blow them up in the streets. I don't know if that's very common in the US, but I find that very particular of Peru. We also eat 12 grapes and every grape has a meaning. So one is for example, so you have a wish for every single grape that you decide um, what it is. However, people mostly wish like for love, for uh, financial stability, so getting like good income level, and then also health of their um, uh, relatives. Um, and then also a meaning behind the scrapes is that since there are 12, each one represents a month of the year and having this prosperity every single month. And that would, oh yeah, and then champagne as well. So it's like a drink for, for celebrating. And then the last one is like the picture of a CD that it's always heard in every Peruvian home, which is called five to 12, which is like, it's five minutes until it's 12 uh, p.m. and yeah, a.m., sorry. And it's like a song that kind of um, brings the atmosphere like uh, happy and sort of like in a celebration mode that a lot of people hear listen to, sorry. Um, so this is um, a video of Lima, the capital city uh, on New Year's. And as you can see in the video, there's gonna be a lot of high, uh, fireworks. So. Lima, el año nuevo. Y ustedes están viendo la ciudad cargada de fuegos artificiales. Sin duda, para muchos, el sinónimo de fiesta, de alegría, de bastante color. Ustedes se han puesto a pensar cómo reaccionan los niños, como este pequeño de tres años que se asustó y que quiso salir por la ventana de su casa, las personas mayores, las personas... Yeah, so basically um, what the TV presenter is saying is that uh, fireworks are synonym of, yeah, like celebrations and happiness. However, at the same time, um, there is a, a, lot of, a lot of people um, use them and like this creates a lot of sound pollution that might affect negatively like animals that are on the streets or like people uh, like young kids or very um, old people so i found this interesting things like fireworks is such an essential part of new year's however it does have negative impacts in some people so just a question to leave you with it's like should we still keep traditions just because like we've been following for many years or we should reflect and adapt them as time goes on progresses or like what should we do in that case like if there's something that we think damages your health for instance or causes pollution should we just keep them because they've been part of our culture for such a long time or should we think of changing our our habits so another tradition is to burn toys um, I frankly don't know why people do it, but it is a way to um, just, it's like a celebration really. And what people do is they buy these toys that are usually related to political figures. So it could be like the president or some congressman. 
um, that is controversial or that not the, that the whole population doesn't support. So they just burned them. <laughs> and this is, I found it very interesting since um, they're like the leaders of our country. However, since people don't really support them, then this is a way of like rebelling to, um, against them. And now I'll speak about Las Cabalas, which are popular traditions that Peruvians follow on New Year's. And their meanings are not exactly obvious. So first I'll like to ask you, why do you think people do that? And then I'll give you the accurate meaning of what, it, what people try to aim at um, when they do them. So the first one is going around your neighborhood with an empty suitcase. So could you please type um, in the comment section or the messages, why do you think people would do that in the middle of the night? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention oh, that. The um, so they will travel in the new year. Yes, so that's right. Um, one of the comments was that people will travel. So yeah, people do that with the aim of attracting like vibes that um, will make them travel in the future within the year. And then the next one is start the year with uh, a money, sorry, with like bills in your hands. And the last one, someone said, so they will fill it with special thoughts. So in the suitcase with special thoughts. So yes. Oh, that's an interesting suggestion. Um, yeah, pe people usually do it because they want to travel within that year. Um, but I've actually never seen someone do it. But I've asked my friends and they, they told me that this is one of their traditions. So the money, someone said they might give it to people and start the year off with something good to buy. Okay. <laughs> so the guesses were um, so that they can give it to people and that they can start them the year with money so that they can buy something. Well, they're close. The second um, reason is kind of close, um, but it's just so that you can like physically have money and that this will give you uh, economic prosperity for the year. So like since you start the year with money, then you also will end it with money. And this means like you actually have it. It's not just like a dream to, to get more money, but it's in your hands. Then the following ones. Um, take a bath with aromatic essences. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They can smell fresh for the new year. <laughs> yeah, so someone said so that they can smell fresh for the new year. Well, actually, um, this is done in order to purify your soul. So you start like being at peace with yourself um, during the year. And number four, wash your hands at midnight with champagne and sugar. I think this one's very, very um, difficult to get. So it is to attract economic prosperity again, and people, yeah, just do it because these are some of like the essential objects, objects that you find at, in your home during that day. So it's related with uh, getting money. Then fifth one, it's putting rice below the door. Someone else guessed for the champagne one, mm -hmm. have clean hands with no germs. <laughs> um, someone said maybe put the rice below the door for poor people or people that need food. Oh, well, I had never thought about it that way. Someone so to keep away bad spirits. The rice? Yeah. Oh, okay. So some of the reasons why people think do this is because of um, some of the like the people that are watching this video right now. It, it's because of a uh, to give it to the poor people and also to kind of deter um, like disease from coming into your home. Bad spirits. Bad yeah. spirits. Um, 
So the reason is actually very, very different. It's to um, like attract, like to attract vibes that will make uh, one of the fa- of your family members get married in the within the year. It's very different, and I wouldn't really find a correlation between putting rice below your door and a wedding. However, like rice is thrown um, during weddings at the end, so I guess that's the the link between both events. Then number six is wearing white clothes. Yeah, so I'll say what, um, why, why people do this. Uh, it's very related to one of the, the reasons why people said rice is put in below doors. So it's to um, prevent any illness from getting to you. Um, and now I'll move on to kind of the last event that wraps up uh, the New Year celebrations. Even though New Year's just like one day, we do have um, a spirit atmosphere uh, sorry a uh, celebration atmosphere until january 6 which is the day of la bajada de reyes and this is a celebration from spain that is now part of peru because we were uh, under like the spanish um, colonization for many years we received our independence in 1821 so Catholicism is very big in our country. 85% of Peruvians identify themselves as Catholic. And this is the reason why we commemorate on January 6th, the arrival of the free kings who visited Jesus, baby Jesus. And this kind of marks off, uh, marks the end of the celebration season. So what happens, um, like the, the reason behind the celebration on Baja, de, like the Baja de Raya celebration is that the free kings traveled for 12 days um, following the stars across the desert to find baby Jesus. And they were Melchor, Gaspar, and Baltasar. So each one represented a different continent, Europe, the Arab world, and Africa. And they traveled to, like, across this 12 days to visit uh, baby Jesus and give him three gifts. So people that are Catholic might know that um, many um, children receive gifts on January 6th. So this used to be the tradition in Peru. Um, I spoke with my grandmother and she told me that in the 1940s, um, it, children would, Peruvian children would receive the gifts um, on January 6th instead of on Christmas, so December 25th. However, since the 1950s, um, Peruvian have started to follow the American tradition to receive gifts on December 25th. Before then, it wasn't, it wasn't the case. So this also, um, marks how we have moved from like Spanish traditions to American traditions and follow those. Thank you so much, Maria. So right now I will go ahead um, to talk about the Chinese New Year. Um, so on the, on the uh, slide, you should see that there are three different titles, which are like uh, they all refer to the same thing, but people usually um, uh, use all these three different titles. Um, so I'm going to uh, explain first that the Spring Festival is used because it's like a literal translation of the Chinese name of the celebration. And the Chinese New Year is sort of not accurate, but it's used often because um, the Chinese population is very large and they are out. And when they celebrate New Year, people think that it's only unique to the Chinese culture, but actually uh, many East Asian cultures and uh, many other uh, Asian cultures in general have this, uh, the New Year celebration, um, yeah, a different, like on a different date than the uh, American uh, New Year. Uh, and then the Lunar New Year is sort of like the most accurate or universal uh, way to refer to it because uh, the so we all know that like the Chinese New Year or like the Lunar New Year is on like a different date from January 1st usually. And it's because of the lunar calendar. So it's a calendar that 
follows the cycle of moon. And it, it was used uh, in ancient times for agriculture. So people would see that like um, when the moon is like gone, you should start um, harvesting or like seeding, some uh, many things like that. Um, so also in China, each year is associate, uh, associated with a zodiac sign. So when you, uh, so the year that you were born, you are, um, you are like, that's your zodiac sign. So I was born in, um, so there are 12 of them and it starts with red and end with pig. So it's on the top. And so I was born in 1999, but since my birthday was before the new year date, which, it, um, which is different from January 1st, like in the common calendar, I was still counted as a tiger. So maybe you can look at the um, picture and see what is your own zodiac sign. Yeah, and feel free to tap your um, zodiac signs into the chat. Were you born in 1998? Oh, okay. Ooh, thanks. Oh. <laughs> yeah, both Maria and I were, uh, are tigers. Yeah, so um, these zodiac signs are used. It's sort of like uh, star signs. I think I put something here. So it's a really commonly used to refer um, associated with like personalities and like hobbies and such that for example tigers and people say you have you have like a lot of ambitions and you like when like a tiger is in the same room with a, like a goat uh, the tiger will dominate like the atmosphere but w like we listen to them but don't treat them too seriously <laughs> yeah yeah, so Chinese New Year, um, New, uh, New Year is just very huge in China. So like about uh, about a month before people start preparing. So it's sort of like Christmas. You need to decorate your room, buy gifts, all that. But in China, you also need to uh, start decorating your room. So I have some pictures here that people will hang uh, uh, spring couplets and uh, the full character, like the square diamond shift in the middle and all the lanterns on the picture on the right. And these are just some decorations. Uh, they are all in bright right color, which is very uh, important. Uh, people also start cleaning up their rooms, so they don't want any dust or any unclean stuff um, uh, to stay in the room until the next year. Uh, and people also go out to get new clothes a lot. So they're also in uh, bright red color, which I'll explain later the reason for that. And people always go, uh, also go out to get a haircut. So it's really funny because like um, hairdressers, like salons, they'll, they'll have like, they'll be very, very busy right before the new year, but nobody comes after the new year. Yeah, it's sort of like superstition because people, uh, uh, so I don't know if many, uh, many of you know that in ancient times, Chinese people keep like, uh, like whether men or women, they keep very long hair. Like you are not supposed to cut your hair at all your entire lifetime because that hair means life. So it's something given from your parents. Like, so if you cut them, you are just lose, losing your life and you might be in danger. So, so uh, right now uh, people just get a haircut before the new year to have good luck for the next year. And uh, you also need to, um, more for the older people, they'll prepare red envelopes for younger people. So uh, they'll give it as a gift, uh, sort of for, just for money that you can spend on your own. Okay, and this is a picture of red envelopes. So I used to get a lot of them when I was young, but not anymore. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so uh, I mentioned earlier that a bunch of the decora uh, decorations are in the bright red color, and this is why. So we have a legend, it's uh, about a monster called Nian, which is the same thing as 
new uh, as year in Chinese. So like a monster cow year, and every so it comes every year. So that's sort of the name origin. It, it comes every year to a village to scare people off and maybe also eat people. And so uh, and people are like troubled by it for a long time until a sort of a Chinese god he came down to tell people that like if you put um, bright red color outside your door and then light up firecrackers the monster will get scared and so people actually did it um, on New Year's Eve for one night and the monster was scared off and so uh, this is why that we put on like still bright red color decorations and we play firecrackers sort of just still to scare the monster off. Yeah, and this is the reason that firecrackers spring couplets are used. So um, now we uh, come to the actually the New Year's Eve. So the first thing that we do is we have a huge dinner with uh, everybody in the family. And family gathering is really important. So like, um, even though like you are not very closely related, it's best that you get together just for New Year's, uh, New Year's Eve. So a very big dinner, very big table. And um, the picture is kind of small, but like there are several foods that uh, we always eat. So uh, the idea of having something left at the end of year is really important uh, to Chinese people because it means that you're rich, you're doing well. So after you spend a bunch of things, done a lot of things throughout the year, you still have something left. And left sounds similar to fish in Chinese. So we eat fish a lot just to um, have this luck that uh, we'll, have seen, uh, we'll have something left uh, the next year as well. And we also eat, eat dumplings because it's like, it's, it has like a filling inside. So it means that uh, you have wealth. So you have something in your uh, wallet too. And then we also eat noodles because noodles, uh, noodles are long. So uh, it means that you live long for, uh, for older people generally, yeah. And then after like everybody have dinner, you go out to light firecrackers. You know, I have a video for that. Um, as you can tell, like, um, this is not like a national wide uh, celebration. So sort of like after you eat dinner, you sort of just go out with your family and you like you're stuck up with uh, fire, uh, firecrackers be, uh, or fireworks before the uh, before New Year's Eve. And then after you have dinner, you sort of just go out to light up firecrackers and fireworks. And um, it's sort of like really important for you to do it on your own so like if like you are too afraid of the sound of no uh, 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 the sound of it uh, like there's like little ones for children to light up as well however this uh, maria sort of mentioned earlier as well like this causes a lot of pollution like to the air and so like i guess this is why now like no national celebration is like uh used but like um, a lot of people still do it on their own, but like uh, usually not in like a uh, really dense population area. Like in Beijing, there's like 20 million people like in the, uh, what do call it? Uh, in the municipal area. So like uh, that's where like you wouldn't be able to light up firecrackers. So after you have dinner, you light up firecrackers, you come back home and then you turn up uh, turn on the tv so there's like a so cctv is like um try yeah something with china in it but not <laughs> i'm sorry but but not like the ones that you use just to watch people yeah uh so yeah we have a new year's gala on different uh uh stations as well so this is cctv so i think it's Chi china's central television so it's like the national one and there's also like tv station for beijing uh for other provinces there are like 34 provinces so like most uh, most of the provinces have their own 
TV station, and they all have a New Year's gala going on as well. So basically,、um, a lot of people come on performing, singing, dancing, and also、um, also a lot of like stand-up comedians come as well. So just to、um, put together as a celebration, it first started in the 1980s, and it got like very popular in the sense that that year a lot of Very good perform performers came, so people were like, "This is so good," and they keep on kept on going. But now, like, it's getting less and less popular. But people sort of just put it on because it has become a tradition. And then after, so the、uh, TV show sort of en、uh, ends around twelve.、Uh, um, may uh, but like. People still stay up. It's called、um, show sui. So it basically means that you stay up like the entire night in order to like bid a proper farewell to the last year and then welcome the new year properly. And it has been like this tradition has lasted for like thousands of years. And this is that like the only time that you、um, ancient people because China has a very long history. So we have like. A lot of like records left from、uh, ancient times, and、uh, so ancient people say that this is the only time that you are supposed to stay up the entire night, like throughout the year. Yeah. So after New Year,、uh, on the next day, it would be the best to pay like a New Year call to、uh, all your other family、uh, members. So if like.、Uh, I live like、uh, an hour or two hours away, or maybe thirty minutes away from like a family member. It's the best that、uh, on the next day, so actually January first,、uh, but in lunar calendar, to pay a visit to、uh, other family members just to、uh, bring them some gifts and just say greetings and、uh, so for、uh, bid them good luck for the next year. So and this is like the entire.、Uh, Um, pro process of celebrating the new year, and so uh, um, people get like uh, so uh, so for students you get like、uh, four weeks of break just for New Year, so it's longer than Christmas because um, uh, uh, after the New Year there's other like celebrations as well like the Lantern Festival and so on, yeah. So and for And、uh, workers, I think they'll get、um, two weeks, up to three weeks for this celebration as well, because it's very important. And yeah.、Okay. So now we've finished with the presentations on each of our countries,、mm -hmm. and we'd like to,、uh, you to discuss with a partner two questions. So the first one is, what is your favorite tradition from Peru, and what is your favorite tradition from China,、uh, based on what we told you? And then the second question is, do you think these traditions could fit well into the American way of celebrating New Year's Eve, or do you think that they're too different, or that people wouldn't really feel identified with them? So keep these questions in mind while you discuss them with your partner. When they do the show with singers,、um, okay.、Um, all right. So there were some a couple of questions、um, while people are still putting more in the chat. So would you be able to tell a little bit more about the dragon? Like at the beginning, you showed a picture where there's a dragon, and I'm afraid of why they use the dragon. Okay.、Know? Yeah, so、um, some people ask me that, like at the beginning of the here. Let me go find it really quick.、Mm. Yeah, so some people ask at the beginning why is the slide like this? So it's actually not a. Yeah, there is a dragon, but also a snake. If anybody can tell, so I was. Say that this is like during the year of the snake, so people have this huge、uh, light, 
uh, lights going on and to signify that the year of the snake has come. Yeah, so it's different for each zodiac sign. Um, and someone also wanted to know a little bit more about the meaning behind the zodiac sign. Oh, yeah. Come from. So the zodiac signs, honestly, um, like, so for each year, like, in ancient times, like, we didn't use, like, numbers to represent each year. So, but, like, uh, for uh, each year, there's, like, a, a name um, from a zodiac sign. And then, uh, so it's composed of two words. One word is from the zodiac sign. The other one is from another tradition that it's really complicated. But basically, each year is named with two words, and it's like sixty years. It's a cycle, so like each sixty years, it repeats. So um, after sixty years, people sort uh, sort of start like a new cycle. But like we didn't use like this is like uh, two thousand something or ninety fifty, but we use like zodiac sign actually to represent that year. So that's like the meaning of it. But usually now we just like, we have our own zodiac sign and your grandparents will give you like um, accessories of your zodiac sign to, for your good luck. So it sort of functions like a star sign. Yeah. Um, and why, they wanted you to repeat why they need to scare that, the monster in the okay. story. Yeah. Um, so basic, um, the, so the legend is, uh, the legend is about like this monster goes to like the village every year that to, uh, scare people, launders, like, so steal things from the village and also eat people. So it's really, so bad things are happening when the monster comes and people are really suffering from it, but it only comes every year, like on the new year's Eve. So um, when the Chinese guy came, they, uh, he told people that like, if you use bright red color uh, and the firecrackers, which produce like huge noises, and uh, then you will be able to scare the monsters off. If you guys wanted to go to your last slide, you can, that was the one Yes. Mm, this one? Uh, yes. So this is our second assessment and it's, um, the question is, in comparison to the U United States, how different do Peru and China celebrate New Year's? So if you could rank um, how different they are. So for example, from Ch for China, you could say one, which means that they're extremely similar, and five, that it, they're extremely different. So if you could do um, that with both countries and then tell us um, which number you chose. Was China three or four? So pretty different. Mm -hmm. Peru two. So I think it's a little more. more similar. Similar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You said it has like shifted more to be more like American. Yeah. Tradition. Yeah. Also, like a fun, fun fact. Like, um, so we have inverted seasons. Um, when it's winter here, it's summer there. Oh, that's and right. We also celebrate Christmas on this uh, December twenty fifth, and it's very hot. It's it's in the middle of the summer. So instead of it's instead of eating foods that would be like usually eaten during the summer. We also have like this big dinner with turkey and like hot chocolate, like very hot foods that are eaten here in the U.S. So it's funny how um, even though we're in the middle of the summer, we are very Americanized in, in how we celebrate Christmas since we also have like this um, pine trees as, as a Christmas tree, even though there are no pine, uh, pine trees uh, grow in Peru. So they're usually like artificial. Yeah. And, yeah, and we also have like Santa Claus and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And thank you so much for listening. And if you have any questions, please type in the comment section so we can answer them. Yeah. I'm thinking one person, a couple had to go because they ended. Um, that's when they did all five today, and they were in their yeah. and they enjoyed it.
Um, there's a question again of why they wash the hands with champagne and sugar. If you can explain that again. <laughs> yeah, um, so this is not something, those traditions are not something that everyone um, does. In fact, I have done, like I have eaten grapes sometimes, but not, not, not every single year. So some were like very new to me. Um, I had never, I had never seen someone walk with like a luggage in the streets, and I also hadn't heard about the, the one that's washing your hands with champagne and sugar. So, I don't really know um, why like some people do them. It's just like they're like if you do so, it's it's gonna bring you um, economic prosperity in the future, like within that year, as well as like yellow is associated with luck. So then, you should wear something yellow in order to do so. So some don't have like a very explicit meaning. However, it's just like um, cultural knowledge that people believe in, so they do so. What do they do when they celebrate Three Kings Day in Peru for January 6th? So a little bit more about oh, that yeah. celebration. So in, um, so for Three Kings Day, usually in public places like a shopping mall or like a famous square in, in any city, there will be people that will dress up as, as like Three Kings and then they will like do sort of a show. So this is mainly to like attract uh, kids and for them like to watch and like be entertained by them. Um, I think that it's still some people give out gifts. However, most of the gifts are now given on, on Christmas, during Christmas time, not really then. And they also also transmitted uh, on the te television whenever like they do this um, public events where there's three kings like kind of performing on a public space. They also um, pass it on television. So I'd say it's mainly those two. And of course, um, also in the churches, there is um, like a mass um, commemorating this day since it's a Catholic celebration. And we like 80, 85% of the population identifies as Catholic. So a part of that day would be devoted to going to a church and attending that mass, which would be focused on, on the Three Kings Day. All right, I think that's all the questions. So thank you so much for joining us and I hope you guys have a good weekend and thanks for selling International Education Week. And we will be posting all these videos on our YouTube channel after we edit them. So um, you can go back and watch any presentations that you missed from earlier today. So bye everyone. Bye. bye.